Cramp, cramp for Ben Hill. Cramp on the way up the hill for Ben Hill. So he will lose his chance of winning the intermediate oh. sprint in England. Oh. Oh. Most of us have suffered from cramp at one point or another during our various cycling related endeavors. It is a painful experience, which at worst can lead to an early end to an enjoyable day's ride. But what actually is cramp? And well, why does it happen? What can we do to prevent it? Well, in this video, we thought we'd take a look. Oh gosh, blimey. So a muscle cramp is basically a painful, sudden and involuntary contraction of one or more of your muscles. And it's a common problem encountered by non-athletes and athletes alike. Now the Mayo Clinic says that long bouts of exercise or physical labour, particularly in hot weather, can lead to muscle cramps. Which, yeah, sounds like cycling, doesn't it? For those of you lucky enough to not have ever experienced a cramp, Here's a more visual description of what it looks like. Ah, Nigel Cramp! Ah, 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 Nigel! Ah! Brother in law, Nigel! Oh. I've got cramp! Ah, can you help me? Stretch it out for me. Stretch, no. stretch it out! Ah! No, I need. Ah! Nigel! Oh. Come and help me! Just stretch it out. What? Stretch it out and cramp. Why? Because the stretching helps. It's hard enough, will you? Oh, come on, we're going through this. Just give it a bit, a bit of a stretch. Ah, oh, it's really painful. Oh, it's really painful. Oh, oh, that's better. That's better. That's better, yeah, thanks. Thanks, brother-in-law. What are you stopping for? That's surely enough. Huh? That's surely enough. 15 no? to 30 seconds. That was like 12. Until the muscle relaxes, it's still tense. 15 to 30 seconds like your wheelie was five seconds. Here we go again. Here we go again. Exercise related muscle cramps, or ERMCs as they're technically known, are a common occurrence. They typically affect the quadricep muscles or muscles in the legs for any of us cyclists. And well, they're a painful experience. They're usually benign and can last for, well, a few seconds to up to a few minutes. But well, we are experiencing a cramp. It doesn't seem harmless at the time, I tell you. It feels like, well, it feels like the end of your cycling life. Nigel, I'm not gonna be able to cycle for years after this. Ugh. Now, there still is considerable debate about why muscles do actually cramp. But the most recent research in science says that muscles cramp due to hyperactivity of the nerve muscle reflex arc. That is the pathway of electric messaging to your muscles. In this way, some of the normal inhibitory activity of the central nervous system is lost due to fatigue of the central nervous system and overuse. So basically, we all have these receptors in our muscles called Golgi tendon organs, which are found in the tendons of the muscle. Now, their job is to measure feedback and reduce tension in the muscles when necessary. In a fatigued state, the Golgi tendon organs basically don't do this job as well. Muscle tension goes unchecked and becomes unbalanced and as a result, there's greater excitatory signals from the alpha motor neuron, which translates to the fact that muscles therefore go through greater sustained periods of activation, leading to our old friend, cramp. This has been backed up by research by Solzer, Swellness and Noakes, who found increased electrical activity in cramping Ironman athletes. It's been suggested that prolonged sitting, poor or abnormal posture, inefficient biomechanics, all factors that are related to poor flexibility, all lead these reflexes to malfunction. And age also seems to play a role with many people experiencing cramp later in life where maybe they didn't experience it before. 
Body weight also plays a role and also improper footwear. Eccentric muscle contraction has also been linked to cramp. So that's when the force applied to a muscle exceeds the force actually implemented by the muscle itself. So it's like a force lengthening of that muscle under pressure. 1002. But how does this translate to your cycling? And what can you do to combat it? Well, science still debates this matter a little bit, but practically there are a few things to consider if you do constantly suffer from cramps that may work for you. If you go out and ride well above your limits, well, you'll eventually fatigue. Understand your limits. I'm not saying don't go beyond your limits, but understand if you do push yourself super, super hard, well, you're gonna fatigue pretty hard as well. And with this, your muscles will probably cramp as they go beyond what they are maybe capable of. Don't go from zero to hero. If you're looking to take on a race, a sportive, or maybe just ride longer and harder than you've ever ridden before, well, the key is progressive training. That's slowly building up to the level you want to ride at and making small little adaptions aided by rest that will delay the onset of fatigue as you gain fitness. So you really want to try and work at the fitness level you're at and not just jump in to a 200 kilometer sport eve with very little training because well, the likelihood is you'll suffer the consequences and get a terrible cramp. I shouldn't have done that. Also, if you're jumping from one bike to another, small changes in position, a raised saddle, for instance, these can all cause stresses in the body that you're not used to, which can definitely be a factor in cramping. And the same goes for riding on different terrains. If you're always used to riding on the pan flat roads of Holland, for instance, and then you go to a different destination and you're suddenly riding on these long mountain passes or really short, steep climbs, employing a different, slightly different muscle set, then this can be a factor in cramping too. Reconsider your position on the bike or look to get a professional bike fit. Speaking broadly, it may be that you are inefficiently relying on one muscle set more than another when you're pedaling. So that could mean that the cramping muscle is fatiguing quicker than usual. Due to the repetitive nature of cycling and the lack of full hip extension in the pedaling stroke, cyclists quite often have stronger quadriceps in relation to their glutes and their hamstrings. And these imbalances can quite often be compounded by long periods of inactivity and prolonged sitting. Activation exercises before cycling are a great way to combat this as our good friends at GTN have shown here. Simple glute or shoulder bridges are a great addition to your pre-ride routine. Instead of looking to increase muscle capacity, muscle activation exercises purportedly strengthen motor pathways, which increase muscle efficiency. Hydration and electrolyte levels are another hotly debated topic in the science of cramping. If we look at anecdotal evidence though, there does seem to be a trend between higher salt or electrolyte loss and cramping. Specifically in hot environments where dehydration and electrolyte loss through sweat is amplified, consumption of an electrolyte drink may delay the onset of muscle cramps. So look to manage your electrolyte losses by hydrating properly, but don't overhydrate either. Just drinking lots of water when you are sweating a lot can actually cause your electrolyte levels to drop or dilute. And that balance then becomes compromised. Look to manage your sweat rate and understand your sweat loss better so you can hydrate properly. This simple sweat test 
is a really great resource that's free and easy to use to understand your own personal sweat rate. A general, very general rule of thumb though is to try and consume one 500 milliliter bottle of electrolyte solution per hour when you're out on the bike. Lastly, stretch. If a muscle's hyperexcitability is the basis of cramping, then stretching should reduce the response. There is well recognized evidence that once a cramp starts in an affected muscle, if you then stretch that muscle, it will help to reduce the cramp. So next time you're out on the bike and you feel a cramp coming on or you have a cramp in your legs, then back off, ease off the pedals and stretch the affected muscle for around 15 to 30 seconds until the cramp is gone or until you can return your leg to a relaxed normal position on the bike and the cramp doesn't return. Stretching the major muscles for five or 10 minutes before or after a ride can really help prevent cramps. And the importance of flexibility cannot be more overstated, particularly for older athletes. Cramping can be oh, an annoying limiter to our riding. And it's a complicated issue with not one, but many factors that can contribute to that all too painful cramp. But I really hope this video has helped you understand it a bit better and maybe given you some bits of advice to help you curtail your next cramp. But please let me know in the comment section below, what are your cramping stories? Mine either involve rubbing my hamstring like this or trying to straighten my leg out of a car window to stop a cramps painful, painful feeling. Oh. oh, jeepers. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you all soon. Right, I need to stretch this cramp out now. I can't get off the bike. It's the hard bit, isn't it? Getting off the bike when you've got a cramp. Oh. Ah. Ah. Jupiter's beard. <laughs>